Are you looking to get started in Popper but don't know where to begin? Are you an established player who is tired of running commonly played decks like Delver, Blitz, Mono Black, and wants something distinct, different, and under the radar? Are you seeking out a deck that has great synergy, neat combos, and the exalted mechanic? Then have I got a deck for you. Selesnia Exalted. Selesnia Exalted is a white-green aggro deck that plays similarly to Bogle's Hexproof, but has the advantage of running more robust creatures. While Glade covers Scout, Slippery Bogle, and Silhana Ledgewalker are tough to kill, they all fail in the face of Electricery, one of the most commonly played sideboard cards in the format. White-green aggro trades in auras in favor of plus one, plus one bonuses, which come from exalted triggers and counters from travel preparations. The result is a slightly slower deck that leans more on synergy between cards than the much cursed about union of a hexproof creature with ethereal armor. Best of all, the deck is very under the radar right now, yet I feel it is positioned well in the current meta. It's popper, so nothing ever rotates. Once you have this deck, you have it for life. And best of all, it only costs about $40. Let's take a look. We're in Pauper Exalted, so naturally we run play sets of Acrossan Squire and Quasali Pride Mage. Each of these cards has Exalted and reads, whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. An ability that adds up fast with multiple Exalted creatures in play. Something this deck can start dropping as early as turn one. While Popper does not have Noble Hierarch, Acrossan Squire does the job of boosting attacks. On its own, it can swing for two on the second turn, but stacking it with another exalted creature can make even the lowliest creature a mighty threat. Opening on a single squire, but following it up with another or a Quasali Pride Mage could get you off to a fast start. Pride Mages, a common so powerful that it's played in modern, are a 2-2 cat wizard for green and a white. Exalted, you can also spend one mana of any color and sacrifice the Pride Mage to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Wow. Popper is not a place for cheap two-color cards. While the mana is far from terrible, the fact of the matter is that these cards tend to be cast on a less than optimal turn. So when a two-color two-drop sees play, it needs to be powerful. And Quasali Pride Mage is that. Exalted gives it a point of hasted power, while also letting it attack as a 3-3 on its own. And with Attacked on Naturalize, you have a card that can attack the format from multiple angles. The only strike against this this is that it is two colors. The deck has a lot of fun running Rend Claw Trows, Safehold Elites, and comboing them with travel preparations. Safehold Elite and Rend Claw Trow both have Persist, meaning when this creature is put into a graveyard from play, if it had no negative one, negative one counters on it, return it to play under its owner's control with a negative one, negative one counter on it. Safehold Elite is one and either a green or a white for a two, two, and the Rend Claw Trow is two of any color and either a black or a green. Obviously we're only using green for a two, two as well, but the Rendclaw Trow has Wither, which means this creature deals damage to creatures in the form of negative one, negative one counters. These work so well with travel preparations. A sorcery for one and a green that says put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures and has flashback for one and a white. But never minding that synergy for a moment, just recognize how much creature removal is a way of life in Pauper. You can't go two feet without tripping over your opponent's Chainer's Edict. And while Mono Black might be less popular these days, that flashbacking Edict effect is still a staple. Cards like Safehold Elite let you protect a grown threat while coming back to block again. The fact that Rend Claw also has Wither is great against creatures like Atog, or just any big beaters that your opponent is swinging in with. Across a few combat phases, the troll can weaken those creatures thrice over. Trow is an interesting card and has the ability to tussle 
with much larger threats, helping to bring them down to size. But the real power here is in how these cards work with travel preparations. A slow mini overrun, travel preparations can make it so your creatures will never lose a combat. This is because travel preparations plus one plus one counters annihilate the negative one negative one counters on a persisted safe hold elite or Ravenclaw trow, which means you get extra uses out of those cards. We also might want to pile them on cards like our Sun Grace Pegasus, which makes it hard for anyone to race us on pure combat damage. Throw in a card like Rancor to turn any enchanted creature into a true threat that demands an answer. Combine all of this with Exalted and you've got the ability to either eke out value from your opponent or swing in for heavy, unrelenting hits. The deck also runs a lone Aqua Strand Spider, a 0-0 with Graft 2 for green and one mana of any color. Aqua Strand Spider enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. But whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you may move a plus one plus one counter from this creature onto it. Or you may spend green at any time to have target creature with a plus one plus one counter on it gain reach until end of turn. Not only does Graft make it so you can grow your other creatures, but in conjunction with travel preparations, you can keep spreading the love. More than that, you can use the spider's activated ability to give any buffed creature reach. Great against creatures with flying like Delver of Secrets and Spell Stutter Sprite. The spider makes it that much easier to defend yourself against any force by air. We also run two Benevolent Bodyguards, a workhorse of a one-drop. Benevolent Bodyguard is only one white for a 1-1 one, one human cleric. You can sacrifice Benevolent Bodyguard at any time and give target creature you control protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Just sit around and wait for a more important creature to get targeted by a kill spell. Then Bodyguard will do its duty and die to protect its ward. While hardly a threat in and of itself, the Bodyguard makes it harder for your opponent to deal with your army, which is exactly what this deck wants from a one drop. We also want to run a full play set of core Skyfishers, the 2-3 flyer that is on the right side to trade with Insectile Aberration. Throw a few counters on it and it gets nearly impossible to stop. While this deck lacks Thraben Inspector to generate clue tokens, we use Skyfisher instead to reset our persist creatures or Aquastrand Spiders with this Zendikar standout. And for when we really can't abide by a threat on the board, we have four Journey to Nowhere. In terms of our mana base, we now run the affordable play set of Ash Barons. If the price on this ever increases, it could always be swapped out for Evolving Wilds or additional duels. Speaking of duels, we want a full play set of Blossoming Sands, and I've found a lot of success with one Cabria Crossroads. An on-color land for two life is a decent trade-off for Crossroads entering the battlefield tapped. Beyond that, just six forests and six plains. As always, the sideboard can go a lot of different directions. I've found good use in Aerial Volley to let us take down small flyers or one medium-sized flyer, a couple relics of Progenitus to laugh at our opponent's graveyards, and if we need removal, Sunlance is a one-mana removal spell that does work against non-white decks. Whenever we're up against Disfigure, Lightning Bolt, or other combat-based decks, Thrill of the Hunt is the card that has what we are looking for, and though one of our most costly pieces, two standard bearers are must-haves, especially if we end up against Bogle's Hexproof. Nice Ancestral Mask you have there. Would be a shame if someone had to change its target. I also like to have a pair of Core Sanctifiers, a Disenchant strapped to a body that can conveniently be reused by our Core Sky Fisher. And finally, it's always a good idea to bring in Prismatic Strands, the sideboard all-star and catch-all against damage-based attacks. Selesnia Exalted is another great first popper deck. It has space to improve, and given the recent trends in Limited, it seems highly likely to get more upgrades and great new gifts in the next few years. While I wish price wasn't quite up in that $40 range, those who don't care about being so precise can easily find replacements, and all we need is the right strategic reprint to tank the overall cost of this deck by a lot. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a message. What kind of deck would you like to see a tech on next? Let me know in the comments below. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, 
Picard Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Tolarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.